standing for a word of prayer if you would. Uh, Brother Noble, would you mind open our service in a word of prayer please tonight? <coughs> Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If you would please turn over to 445. We'll sing No Not One, hymn number 400. 45. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Not a 
friend like the holy Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. I've had several people ask about the Prems, our ambassadors for Christ in the Ukraine, with the war still going on over there. And we have a letter tonight. Dear Brother Poole, Psalm 17, 7. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. We're still under martial law. Curfew is from 11 p.m. till 5 a.m. And at war with Russia, who has risen up against us. We've seen an increase of refugees coming to our city from the regions close by, which are getting bombed regularly. This makes it hard for the Odessans who are struggling and looking for work in our city. It's harder to find a job, and the aid goes to the refugees and not to the locals, which causes divisions. We're praying for wisdom and discretion as we help and distribute aid. The Lord has given us a work to do, and we are, with help, continuing to do it. We call it Meals on Wheels. Right now, we feed over 100 people each day. We always start with a word from the Bible and then pass out food into their pots and pans. God blesses his work. And we've seen many saved and now coming to church. Amen. Praise the Lord and shame on the devil. At the beginning of the war, 90% of our church evacuated. But the 10% that stayed knew this is what God wanted for us. He's raised up a new church group. And we're running the same attendance now as we did before the war, only now with new people. God's ways are higher than our ways. Glory to his name. We have visitors every service. Wonderful seeing him work. A large group of our members who evacuated to Romania have started a service there for Ukrainians. And Victor, our former deacon is looking after this ministry. They had 40 last week, praise God. We have no idea how long this war will last. So we just keep doing what the Lord has called us to do faithfully and keep lifting him up. To date, we have printed 1,010,000 tracts. God is also using us to get his word spread all over our country. Love offerings for the printing ministry purchase the tracts and also pay for shipping to all the Ukrainians involved in evangelism. Every week, more and more people write us asking for literature and tracts to pass out in their regions. Praise the Lord for all the sowers. Thank you so much for your prayers and support. God has used you more than you can imagine. One day you will see how many lives the Lord saved and changed by using you. Keep it up and may he do great things through all of us. To God be the glory. Thank you for striving together with us to reach Ukraine for Christ. Mark, Esther, Lydia, and Hannah Prem. All right, we'll take a look at our prayer list now. So if you need a prayer list, you haven't gotten one yet, but you'd like one, if you'd raise your hand, we've got one that can come your way. Anybody like that? All right, well, we've got much to thank the Lord for, as always. And um, the... Um, the LeBates have much to thank the Lord for. Today's their anniversary. All right, so happy anniversary. We're glad for that. And um, so 
Um, but praise the Lord for his blessings. We're off to a good start in school. We're thankful for that. Um, now, it's a, it's a pretty sad day for many uh, parents as college students are leaving today, tomorrow. And uh, so uh, pray for our college students as they'll be driving. Pray for moms uh, of college students as, as they'll be uh, leaving again, especially, you know, dads, dads are sad too, but especially moms, right? And so just remember each other. And uh, so uh, pray for Preacher, Mrs. Poole, our staff, our deacons. Remember these, of course, uh, in your prayers. We're thankful for each one uh, that's involved in all the work that goes on behind the scenes. You come in in the morning and you see that uh, someone has mopped and someone has emptied trash and someone has uh, picked up uh, in the auditorium and straightened up. You know, we're thankful for all that uh, happens and all the people that are involved um, in all these various things. So I know there's a lot of colleges, Bible colleges and whatnot, where uh, students are already arriving and uh, they're getting ready to uh, have everyone get registered and get started with the new school year. So we do support uh, uh, Commonwealth Baptist College and Providence Baptist College, where they are, I believe, both receiving students now. And so remember them, uh, Blessed Hope is going to take a year off to make some changes there, and I'm sure that we'll hear more about that in just a little bit uh, when uh, the folks from the college will be here in, I believe it's October, so I'm sure they'll tell us a little bit more about that. Um, uh, remember, of course, our country and um, Israel, Jerusalem, we pray for these and uh, many needs and uh, that the Lord will bless and help. Uh, we've got health needs, of course, Brother Friend going through um, his radiation uh, this week and all this week, and so uh, pray for him as he continues that. And uh, so uh, pray for, pray for uh, the Lord's blessing there and help uh, with that. Um, all right, well, who's got something they want to add here tonight to the prayer list? Terry? Who's that? Jamie. Jamie got teeth pulled? All right. Well, pray, pray for Jamie Wilson as he got some teeth pulled there. And uh, also little Michael Wilson. He started school and then he uh, has been sick the last couple days. And so I didn't know if uh, maybe uh, I asked the little girls in his class. I said, did one of you girls ask that boy to marry you or something? Is that why he's not coming back to school? But uh, no, they, they promised that's not the case. So anyway, so pray for little Michael as well. All right. All right. Who else has a need they want to share tonight? Or Yes, sir. Brother Iron. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that reminder. All right, pray for Brother Lada's uh, father. His name is Earl. And he's got heart valve replacement surgery tomorrow. All right. Melinda? I think you have a little friend across the street who had a chip attached to bone in his face. So they ended up having to remove some of that. So pray for him and for Ms. Mason from there. Okay. All right. Mackenzie's friend, Mason Sumner, has a cyst attached to bone, you said, correct? Okay. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. So he did have the surgery and have that removed, but there is some pain. They had to remove some of the bone. So, all right. So pray for this little guy, Mason. All right. Mason Sumner. All right. Who else has a prayer request tonight? Something we want to add? Something we want to bring attention to? Remind us of? Anything like that? You got something? No. Mandy, you look like you're trying to tell me something. No? Okay. All right. Yes, sir.
Um, is that G-R-E-E-R? Okay. Wayne Greer, stomach and lung cancer. All right, pray for that. Okay. All right, all right. So does not, okay. All right. He does not know the Lord. Pray for his salvation. Pray for his physical condition, of course, as well. The st stomach and the lung cancer there. Pray for his family. All right. All right. Terry, you got another one? Who's that now? Julia Raines has a surgery tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. All right. Does anybody know anything about that? Okay. All right. All right. Pray for Julia. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Millie has found out that she has cancer. All right. So pray. For All right. All right. Let's pray for this lady, Millie. You said it's your neighbor? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Anybody else? Prayer request tonight that we want to add. Okay. All right. Well, Brother Bergens, would you please lead us in prayer tonight for these prayer requests? And if, of course, you and the crowd, you're welcome to come to the altar, stay where you're at, have everyone do that as we pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the blessing and the privilege of being able to be in your house here tonight, Lord. It's one of the freedoms that we still have in America, and we're so grateful for it. And we don't take it for granted, Lord, at least we should not take it for granted. For one day, the, the doors may be closed by government order, and we need to be serious-minded people, praying people about the freedoms that we still have and, and the ability and the, and the, and the uh, freedom that we still have to serve you and to love you, Lord, and to uh, hand out tracts. And uh, we heard tonight from the missionary letters all these millions of tracts that have been handed out in the Ukraine and how we need to be doing that here in this country. And, and uh, we're, so, we're just thankful, Lord. We're thankful for your prayers that you've answered uh, every Wednesday night, Lord, every Sunday, uh, people and situations are mentioned from this pulpit. And, and from time to time, we hear of your answers to prayer. We, we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to us, even when we're not faithful many times. But you're so faithful to take care of us and to answer our prayers. And we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for Jesus, Lord, and what he did for us on the cross. And without him, Lord, we have no hope. Where would we be without Jesus? We thank you for our church. We thank you for the families in this church and for that blessed hope and so that wonderful hope of salvation that we have. And again, Lord, thank you for the privilege to serve you. We th uh, thank you for the leadership in this church. We thank you for our pastor, pastor's wife. We thank you for the progress that he's making, Lord. And we continue to to uh, uphold him before the throne of God, that you will have your hand on him each day. And each day, Lord, you will give him more and more healing and, and renewed strength and bless, bless his wife, bless his family, Lord, and give uh, the doctors and those that are taking care of him, give them wisdom in helping him. We pray for our staff, pray for our deacons and uh, all the ministers in this church. Thank you for all the workers, everyone that has a part in uh, working in the church, Lord, 
in the functions of this church, seeing that it goes forward and not backwards. We thank you for, uh, we, we pray for our country, pray for the leadership in this country, Lord. Sometimes it seems that we have no leadership, but Lord, we know that you're in control of everything, and we pray that you would uh, have your hand on our leaders. Pray for the nation of Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord. And uh, the song we uh, sang tonight, uh, Jesus knows all about our struggles. And Lord, we, there are many uh, that have struggles and, and uh, we're struggling with health issues and, and, and different uh, things like that. We pray for Brother um, uh, Scott Friend, Lord, radiation all this week. And it, we know that radiation takes a, a heavy toll on the body. And we pray that you'll bless him and strengthen him and help him through this, Lord. We pray for Brother Monty Watts. He's uh, going through a revival, if not this week. I'm not sure exactly when it started, but we pray for this 15-day revival that he uh, is or will be involved in, Lord, and that you'll have your hand on him, Lord, and you'll give him just the messages that the people uh, need to hear, and, that, and many souls will be saved. We pray for the flooding victims in Kentucky, many of them probably still out of their homes, and uh, we pray for these folks, Lord. We're just thankful that we can be on the praying end and the giving end rather than on the receiving end of this, Lord. And we're just, just thankful for your goodness. Uh, we pray, uh, as Brother Jeremy mentioned, having a good start in our school this year. And we pray for the school teachers, pray for the, uh, all the students, that you will have your hand on them and bless them and help them to to be a good students, they'll learn uh, all that they need to learn. And for our Bible college students that are going back, Lord, we pray for your gracious hand to be on them and that you will give them the help that they need in their studies this year and uh, they'll, all, they'll all do very well. Uh, we pray for the other ministries that are mentioned here, uh, Eric Miller in Advance America, the Calvary Christian Ministries, the Christian Radio International, and on down here, all these that are listed. We pray for these, and thank you, Father, that there are ministries like this that are reaching out to souls. And we pray for this list of pastors and wives and their health needs, uh, not just our pastor and his wife, but these others that are mentioned here. And we're thankful for these folks that you have helped and touched in, uh, in many different ways. Lord, we pray for little Michael Wilson, who's sick. Pray for your healing hand to be on him. And pray for Brother Ladder's dad, Earl, that with this heart valve we're being replaced tomorrow. Lord, guide the hands of the doctors and the surgeons and uh, give good success there. Pray for Mackenzie's little friend, Mason, that you will heal that little guy. And, and uh, Wayne Greer, uh, employee, uh, the father of an employee of my son, Randy, has his stomach and lung cancer. Most of all, Lord, we're concerned that he might know Jesus as his Savior before he leaves this earth. And we pray for his salvation and pray that there would be someone, Lord, to bring the salvation message to him. And for Julia Reigns with her, her stomach and what's going on with her. And uh, uh, this lady that Brother Dean mentioned, we pray for all of our missionaries, Lord. We thank God for each and every one of them. We thankful, Father, for the, that they've been, most of them have been in this church at one time or another. And it's always such a joy and a blessing to hear uh, them speak and to hear uh, what, uh, who and what we're supporting and the work that they're doing and where, uh, Lord, our prayers are going and our support is going. And we're just uh, are grateful, dear God, to be a part of the work of God that's going on around the world through these men and women. And uh, we continue to pray for Brother Mark Prem that you'll keep your hand on him, Lord, and, and other uh, Christian leaders over there in that country too, not just Mark, but the, the others that are still there facing these uh, uh, war, war situations and uh, uh, something that, Lord, this, we in this country have never faced but may may do so someday and we pray that you will bless our service tonight that you'll have your hand on brother jeremy as he brings the message and all that he does and we're just grateful to be here 
And we love you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we do have um, the new Baptist bread out on the uh, table in the atrium. And if you want some devotionals, you can pick that up. That's available there on the atrium table. Also, uh, just want to remind you of our services coming up. Of course, Sunday school at 10 o'clock, Sunday morning at 11 for the morning service, and then 5.30 for uh, the evening service. We have visitation on Saturday at 10 o'clock. We encourage everybody to come. When we come in, uh, go straight down the Sunday school wing, all the way at the end of the hall, room A117 is where we meet uh, for visitation. Um, we have several things coming up. One of those is the Ladies Paint Fellowship. Uh, that will be Saturday, October 29th. And so uh, $25 a person. And... Um, Let's see, registration and all money must be submitted by Wednesday, September 28th in order for them to have time to get all the supplies and everything. Uh, so the deadline for registration and money being turned in Wednesday, September 28th. Uh, last time uh, the ladies did the paint uh, fellowship, it was very, very well attended. And uh, from what I understand, everybody loved it. And uh, who knew the ladies were such artists. And uh, so, uh, but a great time had by them. So if you didn't get a chance to go last time, we'd encourage you uh, to uh, come this time. Uh, we will have a special Harvest Sunday on October the 2nd. We'll have a Sunday morning service at 10 o'clock, no Sunday school, uh, and then uh, dinner on the grounds after uh, the service followed by family activities and then an afternoon service. And so we'll have some uh, special guests with us uh, during that time as well. Uh, Brother Presswood and the Matthews family will be singing. So uh, we look forward to that day. That's coming up October 2nd. Brother Ken Graham will be here with us in our services on uh, September 18th. And uh, so we look forward to that. And then on September 7th, the King's Kids will be back in session. So um, I'm sure all the children are excited about that and look forward to King's Kids and uh, so I certainly appreciate King's Kids and uh, just having my kids go through there and uh, all the scriptures that they memorize and all the uh, doctrines and all the truths and all the diff different things that uh, are taught there. And, and as a part of King's Kids, what a wonderful program that it is. And so next week, uh, or I'm sorry, this Sunday, uh, there will be King's Kids Awards uh, from the previous year in the evening service, so we look forward to that. And one of the greatest announcements of all for children of all ages, no school on September 5th for Labor Day, right? Are you guys already excited for a day off? And so, anyway, um, so that's going on. So, all right, we'll go ahead and take our offering at this time, so if we can ask our ushers to come and be ready for that. Um, they do have the, an amount here for uh, money that's been promised to Faith Promise Missions for the year. I believe it's the same. Uh, I don't know if it's gone up, but $149,903. And so what a wonderful thing that is. And uh, so we're thankful to be a part of Faith Promise Missions. And if you haven't gotten involved with that yet, we'd encourage you to do so. All right, Brother Stone, will you please come and uh, pray for the offering? I, I do have. I do thank you for this day, Lord. Just thank you for the guys for you and for your many blessings, Lord. Just thank you for the opportunity we have to, to serve you, Lord. Just and just thank you for the the opportunity for the uh, the mission that we can have. Lord. And I pray for the opportunity today that go for the needs of this church and for the offering that for the uh, mission and the other needs of this church. And I just in this name, this name, Amen. <laughs>
Grab your hymnals again, if you would, please. Turn to 402. And if you would, let's stand together. We'll sing Faith is the Victory, hymn number 402. sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. By faith they, like a whirlwind's breath, swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is the victory Faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find, drawn up in dread array. Let tents of ease be left behind, and onward to the fray. Salvation's helmet on each head, with truth all girt about. The earth shall tremble neath our tread, and echo with our shout. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. White raiment shall be given Before the angels he shall know His name confessed in heaven Then onward from the hills of light Our hearts with love aflame Will vanquish all the host of night In Jesus' conquering name Faith You may be seated. Brother Pate, before Brother Phil comes, I, I noticed that you've got the display. Do you need to make an announcement about teen class? All right. Sorry, Brother Phil. Okay, so we have a display set, out, uh, set up in the atrium out there. All the teenagers are here tonight. Make sure you swing by that table, fill out a registration card so that we can get your information, so that we can get you sponsors. Yay! So you can get stuff and get prayed for for your birthdays. So make sure all of you teenagers swing by that table out there. And there's registration cards out there, a little bit of display of some of the stuff. And so this year we're doing um, ironclad theme, kind of a military theme, preparing uh, our young people for the battle ahead. So make sure that you swing by there, tell your buddies. We'll have it out Sunday as well to get the registrations done. Thank you. Jesus. 
Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, more wonderful it seems, than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me, and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, tis pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story and his love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing a new so long. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his Appreciate that, Brother Phil. All right, well, if you, um, well, let's see, I don't necessarily need you to turn there. Just kind of by way of introduction, uh, just kind of thinking about uh, this verse and thinking about some things uh, maybe to talk about here in the next few Wednesdays. Um, and uh, the verse is uh, 1 Chronicles chapter number 12. Of course, you're welcome to turn there if you'd like to, but uh, 1 Chronicles chapter number 12 uh, here we have uh, David is uh, coming to the kingdom. Uh, uh, Saul has been killed. Uh, there's this transition time happening. David is coming to the kingdom. And uh, the Bible lists out uh, in uh, chapter 11 and uh, chapter 12 all the different groups of people uh, that are kind of coming along and helping uh, David in First Chronicles chapter number 12. And then uh, so we have these different warriors, these different groups of people that are coming. And then in verse 32, it says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their commandment. 
And I think about that phrase, men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And certainly we need uh, Christians that have understanding of the times and, and to know what, what we ought to do as God's people. And, um, you know, we're surrounded, of course, uh, with uh, different ideologies, different teachings, different doctrines uh, that, um, that we have to figure out as Christians, what are we going to do with these things that we're hearing? Uh, where, where do we stand with those things that we're hearing? And uh, so that's kind of the train of thought here um, that I, I, I want to develop some things here over the next uh, few Wednesdays, uh, Lord willing. But um, in doing so, um, I had the privilege last year of teaching uh, uh, through in our junior high and high school Bible class a curriculum called uh, Avoiding Confusion. And uh, we, we've mentioned it uh, before in months past, a little bit here and a little bit there, but uh, just kind of want to bring some thoughts out of that. They're probably going to take us two or three weeks to get through this particular uh, thought pattern here. But uh, as we look at uh, the sanctity of life, and that is certainly something that, um, that um, is kind of on everybody's minds right now across the country, uh, I'm no doubt preaching to the choir um, as, as we go through these things. But I have been around long enough to understand that um, there are a whole lot of people that grow up in church, that go to church for uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 years of their life, and then you uh, wonder where in the world they get some of the things that they believe, and they believe things that are completely contrary to anything that they would have ever learned in, in that church or been taught in that church or been taught uh, by their parents. And so I do feel like this is still a necessary thing. Hopefully, hopefully we're just reminding you of things that you already know and that you already believe, but it, it could be that there are some folks here that maybe are struggling um, in, in, in how, to, how to approach uh, some of these topics and um, that, that we can be an encouragement and a help to you. Maybe it could just be ammunition for you uh, to um, maybe have discussions with people that you work with or people that you're in your family or whatever the case may be. But uh, we mentioned uh, uh, a while back about uh, of course, we're familiar with Roe v, uh, versus Wade being overturned and left basically to the decision of the states. We're familiar with the fact that Indiana did vote uh, and basically restricted almost 100% of abortion uh, in the state of Indiana, for which, of course, we are very thankful. And, uh, and so, um, but we, we do want to talk about uh, this, this idea here uh, over the next few weeks here about the sanctity of life. And so if you would, let's turn to Genesis chapter number 1 in our Bibles here. Genesis chapter number 1. Go all the way back to the beginning. And um, Genesis chapter 1, we see uh, the creation of man. We see how God, or, or how God brought man about, how man came to be. And uh, as we read in these verses here in Genesis chapter number 1, verses 26 through 28, the Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Uh, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And so we might ask questions, or we might be asked questions like, When does life begin? How valuable is a single life? Maybe we would think about these or ponder these things for ourselves. Does the value of a life change? if that life inconveniences someone else. You know, um, if, you, if you just do a quick Google search and you look into reasons why uh, people have abortions, a huge, huge percentage of the reason is just that. 
it, for one reason or, or another, whether it's financial, whether it's their age, you know, I'm, I'm too old for this, whether it's, um, um, you know, any number of things, I, I don't have the support system that I'd like to have, whatever the case may be, really it boils down to a, a vast, a, a large percentage is, is just, it's an inconvenience. And, uh, and so th does that inconvenience change the value of a person's life? Uh, you know, and so uh, as we look at some of these things, uh, I hope it will be a blessing uh, to you. So let's pray, ask the Lord's help, and we'll, we'll dive in. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your love. We do pray that you'd help us, Lord, to be reminded of these truths. We pray that you'd help us to uh, solidify these truths in our own hearts, Lord, as we mentioned earlier, there certainly are people. Uh, it's, it's a surprisingly, uh, alarmingly large number of people that uh, grow up in church and go through church and come out believing all kinds of um, anti-Bible things. And so help us, Lord, that we would, uh, that we would uh, get these truths in our hearts, that we would believe these things because... That's what your word tells us. And so we thank you, Lord, uh, and bless and speak through me and help me, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, really, um, as, we, as we think about uh, where to start off with all this, it, it, of, of course, your, your worldview is going to uh, depend a lot on how you see not only this matter, but uh, issues uh, that we deal with as a nation, as, as individual communities, and so your worldview uh, how do you see the world? Are you looking at it from uh, an atheistic viewpoint? Are you looking at it from a creationist viewpoint? As we read here, that God created man and God breathed into man, you know, and, uh, and, and so God made man and woman. Are you going to look at it from that viewpoint? You know, um, were we, uh, because God created us, then we answer to God. And, and what we believe needs to, needs to be in agreement with God. And, and what he, you know, he has the right uh, to dictate to us how we ought to live our lives and, 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 and to teach us, you know, what's right and what's wrong. He has that right because he's our creator and he's created us. And, you know, a lot of times people forget that. And so depending on, you know, where you're coming from, what is your vantage point? Um, I, I, I can't get it out of my mind, so I have to mention it. Uh, listening to uh, some Patch the Pirate with the kids and uh, one... One uh, patch the pirate, there was a, 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 a lady in charge of, I think it was a kingdom of otters, if I remember correctly. And she was tricked into wearing these dragon scale glasses. And she saw everything through these dragon scale glasses and it, and it messed up her whole view of everything. And it wasn't until the end of the episode when they helped her take off those dragon scale glasses that she was able to see clearly and see right from wrong and all that. And, you know, there's a lot of people in this world that are walking around with dragon scale glasses. And, you know, they, they, they don't see things, you know, they see things the way they want to see them, you know. And uh, uh, sometimes, uh, certainly, uh, you know, you have to really, really, really work much harder at believing um, false teachings than you do just believing uh, the Bible and believing God. But as we, as we think about that, you know, uh, we're going to look at, uh, some of these things. So number one, before we uh, waste any more, not waste, but, you know, take up any more of our time. Number one, we must remember that we are formed in God's image. We are formed in God's image. And as we read through these verses here back in Genesis chapter one, it says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. You know, we are made in the image of God. A lot of times when we think of image of somebody, we think of physical characteristics. You know, sometimes uh, kids are the spitting image of their parents, right? And, uh, you know, either mom or dad, or a strange combination of the two, Right? And uh, so, boy, you look exactly like your mom, but you also look exactly like your dad, you know. And, uh, and, and we think about it, that thing, but, uh, you know, in, 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 uh, created in the image of God, we have a body, we have a soul, we have a spirit. We are unique uh, from all of God's creation in that we can uh, have a relationship 
with the Lord. We can have this relationship with God. We have a conscience. We, we have a soul. We have a spirit. We can, we can uh, develop this uh, relationship with him and, and carry this forth. Um, human life, of course, has sacred value. And uh, as, as we think about this word sacred, originates in the, in the Latin and means belonging to God. So again, we mentioned earlier that God is our creator. Because God is our creator, he has really the right to tell us uh, what he expects from us. And, uh, and so we are sacred. We do belong to God. Uh, you and I own things of value, maybe, but uh, obviously nothing in comparison to the human life uh, that, that belongs to God. Uh, nothing that we have would be considered sacred uh, like our life is to God. Uh, creation belongs to God, but he places, of course, special value on the life of man. Again, in our text in Genesis 1 and verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You know, God has given us dominion over this world and over the animals and over the things that are in the world. I think there's a lot of people that would have problem with this verse right here. You know, PETA and other organizations, you know, how dare you think that you're more important than the, you know, whatever, you know, you think you're more valuable than a ladybug? You know, I don't know, you know, but, uh, you know, the, the, some of these groups take this to quite an extreme. You know, hey, the Bible says, you know, that God is, is concerned about the sparrow, but it also says that we are of much more value than that. And God gave Adam and Eve dominion over this world and over the animals and over the things uh, of this earth. Uh, Genesis 2 and verse number 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You know, some people look at this verse and, and they say, well, that's where life begins. The first time a baby takes a breath on its own, that is where life begins. Well, we're going to look at that, Lord willing, uh, in a little, bit, a little bit later. That is not where life begins. But people look at this and, and, and they get some uh, idea in their head that that's where life begins. Well, Adam and Eve uh, this was a, a special create, or Adam here, this was a special creation. God formed him of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. After Adam and Eve were here, no other human being came about that way, you know. Uh, and so uh, everyone else was born of their mother, and, and so it's a wholly, entirely different process. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll look at uh, the beginning of life here, Lord willing, in just a little bit. But um, Psalm 103, verse 1, the Bible says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Our soul is what makes us unique from all the rest of creation. We alone are able to reflect something of God's character, and we have the capability to demonstrate things like love, mercy, justice, compassion, and we are unique in God's creation in that Job 33, verse 4 says, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Psalm 36, verse 9 says, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Uh, since God, without exception, designates human life as sacred, then you and I ought to do the same thing. Letter B, we see that human life has a specific beginning, okay? Human life has a specific beginning. Um, I want to read uh, some of this article here uh, to you. I, I was looking at this, and with this idea, you know, people argue and fight, you know, when does, when does life actually begin? And, um, and so I came across this, this article here, and of course the devil is fighting because the article was queued up on my iPad, ready to read, and it is no longer there. Don't you love technology? Isn't it wonderful? It's wonderful. Well, it's a medical doctor. He's a pediatrician. He's a brain surgeon. 
Uh, he's all these other things, okay? And, um, and uh, he wrote this article about the fact that the, uh, the scientific community, the medical community, has known without a shadow of a doubt uh, since the 19th century that life begins at conception. He went on to make some other statements that there are a lot of scientists who are uh, doing a disservice to the credibility of science and the medical field by trying to argue anything else. And, um, and, and he's, he's, he made the statement, you know, we talked about, you know, what is your viewpoint, you know, and, and he said they are trying to uh, just tell things that they know to be false just so it would align with uh, their philosophy. And so, uh, you know, different stages of, 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 of human life, where does life begin? Well, life begins at conception. And, uh, and so uh, the Bible talks about uh, the life of individuals in the womb without, without question. And so uh, we'll look at some of these verses here. Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14 says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Jeremiah 1, verse 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Amen. Exodus 21, and verses 22 and 23, give further uh, proof that uh, the life uh, of a child inside the womb not only is a human being, but is also of value to God. As we read these verses, Exodus 21, verses 22 and 23 says, If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished, according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the uh, judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. You know, we do that in this country. If, if someone were to uh, get into uh, an altercation with a woman who's expecting and he were to cause the, uh, the death of that child, he would be uh, charged with, with murder. Uh, maybe if he were to life, take the life of the child and the mother, then he would be charged with two murders. It's interesting that uh, if you go to New York City and you go to the uh, memorial for 9-11 where the uh, Twin Towers had stood, if you've ever been there, it's, just, it's, it's an awesome thing to behold uh, where the Twin Towers stood. They have these uh, just all around uh, where the foundations, I guess, the bases of these towers were. Um, they have names engraved of all the people that were on the, uh, on the different flights or, or uh, whether they were police or fire or whether they were just workers in the tower, whatever, all the different people that they know their names of people who had perished, they're there. They're so there's uh, two different ones, all have, have people's names all around them. When it's uh, people's birthdays, different things, they put little flowers uh, in, in their engraved names. But also, as you go through and you look at the names and you read, you can see that if there was a woman who was expecting, um, uh, it, it'll list her name, and it'll also list the death of the child on the memorial. And so it's interesting that, you know, we can have two completely different takes on this thing. Either it's a baby or it's a clump of cells. Which is it? You know, um, you mean to tell me that the attitude of the, uh, you know, the opinion and the attitude of the woman carrying the baby is what makes all the difference? That really does not make any sense. I don't think that's a very valid argument. Do you? You know, Either, either it's a baby or it's not. Either it's of value or it's not, you know. Uh, so a mother who loves her baby will recognize that it's a baby and talk to it and, uh, you know, all these things, right? And then you have another woman who just doesn't have any regard for the life of the baby and she's willing to sacrifice the life of the baby, again, many times uh, for her own convenience or whatever the reason uh, may be, but you can't you can't really have it both ways. Either it's a baby or it's not a baby. Either the baby has value or the baby doesn't have value. And it really is not a valid argument to say that. Well, 
you know, um, it, it, it's, it's just up to the whims of the mother whether or not it's actually a baby or whether or not the baby in her womb has any value. And, uh, uh, and so, according to God, the baby is a baby. The baby is a person. God knows this person by name already when the baby's developing in the womb. And uh, God places great value on the life of that child. Luke chapter 1 and verse 41 uh, tells a story about uh, Mary uh, and Elizabeth visiting with each other. And the Bible says this, And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now you remember that Mary was carrying the Lord Jesus Christ. Elizabeth was carrying John the Baptist. And when those two mothers met and talked to each other, the babe inside the womb of Elizabeth leaped for joy because of the babe that was inside the womb of Mary. What an awesome thought. And you think about, you know, the, these babies that are in the womb. Uh, Luke 2, verse 12, This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Interesting, it's the same word. It's the same word, the babe lying in the manger, obviously already born, and the babe that leaped in the womb. It wasn't the clump of cells. It wasn't the fetus. It wasn't the fill in the blank that leaped in the womb, and now it's a baby. It, it's the same thing. If you've ever driven on the highway and seen those billboards, I love the billboards of the uh, different developmental, you know, you might see the, the little, the, you know, the very, very early stages where, you know, it, the baby looks like some kind of weird alien, and it says, it's me, and then you see uh, one of those super high-tech 3D ultrasound pictures when the baby's still in the womb, you can pick out all the fe facial features, and it says, still me, and then you see the baby after it's born, you know, cute little baby, and it says, still me. And, you know, you can't argue the fact that, you know, uh, some people have argued, you know, location, you know, <laughs> I'm in the womb, I'm out of the womb, I'm, I'm still the same person. I'm still the same person if I'm standing here, if I walk through that door, it doesn't change who I am based on where I'm standing. And, 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 and the fact that a baby is in the womb or out of the womb doesn't change the fact that it's still a baby. And, uh, you know, uh, this world would try to get people to believe completely contrary to that. And even to that, um, I, man, I wish I had that article, but even to that medical doctor's point, you know, all they're doing, they're trying to push something that they know to be incorrect. They know it to be uh, uh, exactly opposite of what science proves, but if it fits their narrative. So they change their language, and they say things that people want to hear them say. And so uh, then we see, uh, lastly, human life has special purpose. The fact that God specifically made you with intrinsic value means that your life has a purpose. You think about the fact that God made you. Uh, we read these passages. God knew these prophets before they were in the womb. God knew them while they were in the womb. Uh, God knew their name. God had a plan already uh, for their lives. And God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. Anybody who's in here who may be expecting now, God already knows your baby. He knows his or her name. He has a plan and a purpose uh, for their lives. And Isaiah 43, verse number 7, the Bible says this, Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. What God has given you is life itself. It's precious. It's sacred to God. It's a sacred gift from God. You and I, we are created in the image of God and for the glory of God. And may we live our lives with that in mind, that we would remember that we do have a purpose for being here. We do have, uh, you know, God has a plan for us. God wants us to glorify Him, to live for Him, to love Him, to point others to Him. And uh, may we live 
this life knowing that we are special to God, we are important to God, and uh, may, may God help us to realize uh, the sanctity of life. And, and we've got other things that we're going to look at in the next weeks, but um, just kind of scratching the surface here. But, uh, you know, human life is a gift from God. And uh, we need to remember that these babies that are inside of a lady's womb are exactly that. They're babies. They're human beings that have been placed in that womb by God. You know, you see over and over and over through the scriptures that there are women who were barren, who wanted to have babies, and when God saw fit, he opened the womb, you know. And uh, I, I understand, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, things don't necessarily go according to plan. Things might uh, catch us off guard, you know, but it's, it, it's, not, it's not a surprise to God, you know. And, and, uh, and so we need to remember that as, as, we, as we approach this idea of this topic. And I realize that this can be a very, and it is, a very sensitive topic to very many people. There may be people in here who have uh, suffered, uh, maybe people in your family or, or whatnot, you know, because of uh, abortion or other things like that. But, uh, but, but the Bible and what God says, you know, is... is this life is sacred, it's precious, it's given to us by God, and we ought to remember that uh, in, in the decisions, of course, uh, that we make uh, in our lives and with our bodies. So, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, we'll have a time of invitation. Lord, we thank you for your word and these truths. Lord, thank you for reminders. Lord, as we look and we, we remember, Lord, how uh, we are indeed precious in your sight. Lord, um, uh, you loved us, Lord, in our sinful condition so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay for our sins. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord. Help us to think, Lord, like you'd want us to think. Help us, Lord, to see uh, issues like you'd want us to see them through the lens of your word, through the lens of the truth. Not my truth, not your truth, but the one and only truth truth. And I pray, God, that you just help us uh, in these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together, please. We'll sing, I have decided to follow Jesus in hymn number 397. And um, uh, if the Lord spoke in your heart in some way through this, we'd encourage you to come to the altar here. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. We'll sing the next verse as the last. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I follow though no one join me still i will follow no turning back no turning back amen all right well thank you for being here remember saturday 10 o'clock and we'd love to see you come out and help us on visitation so brother mulkey would you please dismiss us in prayer tonight